All right, welcome back to the Hapless Hunter, and today all of this has to go there. Got some lime, got some buckwheat. That's gotta go in that field. All right, so I got some buckweed going. It's June 4th, 5th, 3rd, I don't know. It's around there. It's time to plant more. I planted this a couple weeks ago. Uh, but you can see, I mean, some of this stuff is really getting burnt out. There's supposed to be a bunch of rain coming through for the next week. Obviously, a lot of this did not get covered very well. So I am gonna do this whole field again with another 50 pounds, maybe more. I want this to be really thick. I'm also going to put some up there and roll it and spray it. And if I have 100 pounds left over, I'm going to do the backfield as well. Okay, so the title of this video probably says no-till, and that's what I'm trying to do, but I think I'm probably going to have to really lightly till this, and I'll show you why here in a second. So Jeff Sturgis from Whitetail Habitat Solutions, or uh, Dr. Grant from, uh, from Deer and Growing Deer TV, I apologize in advance that I am actually going to till, uh, but I have so much thatch on here that I don't really have much soil that I need to get this seed in contact with the soil. And I think that's why it's come in so sparse. I think that's why it's come in so sparse. I do have, I mean, I do have a fair amount of seed coming up, but not enough that it's going to be just like beautiful and lush and carpety. So I'm just going to run over this with my, with my disc tiller. It's a old beat up disc tiller. It's, um, I'm not gonna put any weight on it. All I wanna do is just kinda just, just rough up the ground a little bit and get this seed to touch the ground. And I'll show you what I mean by all this thatch and not having seed to soil contact. So this is not soil. There's the soil. And I mean, I got some to germinate, but you see they're already dying out. So I'm gonna disc this up and expose the soil. Even though I've got a fair amount it's come up. I've gone over it really heavy. I won't kill all this, and uh, hopefully I can get get all this to germinate. The four wheeler. Hopefully, it will start. Oh, we have power. And she died. She's alive! Again. The oldest, nastiest tiller in the world. Well, this is not big enough to hold this. So if I put that through there, it won't hold. So, what do you do when you can't find a ball? It'd be so much easier if I would just remember where I put stuff. Uh, the ball's somewhere in this cabin. I don't know where. So we're gonna innovate. I don't think this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. All right, this is literally everything I have to try to keep this thing on. We'll see if it works. You know what would be awesome? It'd be awesome if your four wheeler wouldn't die after every pass. I, I, I it's actually staying on. The tiller is actually staying on, but I can only do one loop and it dies. Right here at the same spot every time. I, I, I don't know what's going on. 
but we'll get it done. All right, this is exactly the kind of stuff that was keeping the seed to get to the soil. So that's why I wanted to till this up. Turns out what I'm really good at growing is rocks. I got rocks everywhere. But I'm gonna throw a few out, give that four wheeler a chance to hopefully chill out, hopefully chill out and uh, start and work. And uh, we'll be back at it. But you can see it's not real deep, right? I mean, except for where the rocks are coming out. It's just really just kind of mixing it up. <laughs> I honestly don't know how I grow anything in here. Uh, but I'm trying to avoid this, right? You see that? Where that, that those seeds aren't going to germinate because they're on top of just like duff. So I'm trying to get them more down like that. All right, stay tuned. All right, just to show you how light this is, there's a buckwheat stalk. A lot of that is buckwheat in there, and that's all gonna survive. And it'll keep growing. But all the stuff that I just planted today will now come up. Welcome to this episode of Rock Farmer. Listen guys, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that it's easy to grow rocks like this. You know, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of money, getting this land to where I can grow rocks like this, okay? Um, you know, you gotta just hang in there. It takes a little perseverance, a little fertilizer. And uh, you know, you too can get buttes like that. I mean, that's a, that's a butte right there. The deer's gonna love that. All right, I'm gonna do a little experiment here. So I've got essentially two fields in the same area. We got this field right here, which has been sprayed and seeded and then tilled. So this field's had glyphosate. This little field right here has not. I just seeded in some buckwheat. I'm gonna go over it with the tiller. Hopefully it won't die on me. And I wanna see what happens. That's just winter rye, left over from last year. So I'm just gonna go over that with the tiller and then see what happens. Uh, I'm expecting rain within a couple days. I don't typically like to till. This soil was holding moisture. It's gonna dry out, it's already drying out, but I got moisture coming in two days. This is the only time I could get down here, so I had to do it. Uh, I had to get seed to soil contact. I'll show you how much better the seed to soil contact is now versus before. And I'll show you what I'm dealing with in here and why I have to till over on this field over here. Okay, so here we are in this little field. And you can see there's really a ton of leaves and duff and there's no way the seeds getting down there. In fact, there's a seed right there. Where are you? Right there on top of a leaf. Another one there. They're all on top of the leaf. So none of those are going to germinate. So I'm going to knock all these down, hopefully, with the, the tiller and just see what happens. See what the difference is between this field and the field across here. Now that's a broken blade. Good times. We'll see if old Bessie can keep running. All right, well in a strange twist of fate, this held, and that wasn't even the problem. The problem was this four-wheeler would not stay running. It kept dying. Um, I managed to get it done, but but uh, barely, and, and not really as good as I would have liked to have, but you know, it wouldn't be hapless hunter if something didn't go wrong. So this thing keeps dying every time I every time I give a gas. So I don't know if this is just too much for it to pull or what. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off and drive it around and see if it stalls. So I'll update you here in a second. Well, this one completely broke. Really not sure how that thing didn't just rip apart. All right, and for our third and final challenge, I'm just gonna broadcast into some junk to get sun, and we're gonna see what comes up. So I'll show you what that is. I cut down some trees on this backfield, and uh, I'm actually threw out some seed way back there too. There's an area I cleared, 
but it looks just like this. So I'm gonna, just gonna show you this and we're gonna see what comes up here. All right, so I broadcast seed all throughout here where it's sunny. And then back here on this trail, probably just wasted a bunch of money because that's mostly leaves. But I just wanted to see it because I had the seed and this is the time when uh, if you're gonna put it out, this is when you put it out. So that's what I did and we'll see what happens. This segment of the program brought to you by Evan Williams. It's no Knob Creek or Buffalo Trace, but it'll do in a pinch. And now, pelletized lime. All right, I'm gonna give you three pro tips on the Earthway spreader. I don't know what mile number it is. It's like the 2300 or the 8600 or the 2530s, 100, I don't know. Pro tip number one. Don't zip past about this point. If you go here, it's almost impossible to get it back zipped. Pro tip number two, close your deal. That's this thing right here. Close it. That way you don't spill a bunch of stuff out. Pro tip number three, there's a piece that's supposed to be right here. Ugh. Pro tip number three, this piece is supposed to be right there. Do not push back this way on this spreader or this piece will snap off. Three pro tips on the Earthway spreader. All right, seeds out, field is tilled, 200 pounds of lime applied and uh, this is what we're looking at. So we'll see how this goes. I think it's gonna do really well actually. We got rain coming in. I don't, I don't like this skin. But this is such a light, light disc that, that I didn't even kill all of my clover and existing buckwheat. So I'll take it, but there's tons of good seed to soil contact. Let me show you that now. All right, so besides rocks, here's an example of where even though I've tilled, the buckwheat's still there. You can see that's only a half an inch deep maybe. Just enough to really expose the soil to kind of incorporate this dead winter rye and get the seed and the pelletized lime down to the soil. Um, and that's what I want, right? I want that seed to soil contact. There's a buckwheat seed, that's what I want. I want that right touching the ground. Instead of big clumps of thatch like this. That is not what we want it hitting. That will break down eventually, but not the way we want it. Now, I don't like tilling because you can see the soil is really wet. Now it's drying out. That's why you want that cover crop. That's what that buckwheat's gonna be. But this field is so nasty and so rocky that I have to do this. Again, it's super light, but now I've got really good seed to soil contact. So we'll take a look at this field in about two weeks. Today's June 3rd, 4th, 5th, I don't know, something like that. That's the field, again, all that clover and buckwheat there is still doing really well. I'll show you what I did in this upper field. All right, all I did here was go over it with the tiller. You can see it knocked that winter wheat down pretty well. We'll see if it kills it. That will be really interesting to see. That is not a crimper, just a tiller. Of course, my tiller, my four-wheeler wanted to die on me constantly. Buckwheat has been seeded in here, overseeded first, then tilled over on, uh, then I tilled over top of it. We'll see what happens with this field. I have n literally no idea what's gonna happen. I mean, I'm, I, I, that's not true. I mean, I'm sure that something's gonna come up. It's just how much is the question. So this field versus this field. This episode of Hapless Hunter brought to you by Smirnoff Hurricane Punch, when it's literally the only thing you have in your fridge. All right guys, well in spite of all kinds of craziness, four-wheeler not working, no ball hitch to hook up the tiller, four-wheeler bogging out, the spreader not wanting to work, I haven't even talked about that, but the spreader's acting a fool. In spite of all of that, somehow we managed to get 
this whole area tilled, this whole area seeded, and 200 pounds of lime put on this about a half acre plot. So, in spite of it all, we persevered, got it done, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what um, we'll look forward to seeing what happens with this field in a couple of weeks. We got rain coming in, in the next couple of days, and uh, excited to see what's going to happen. Hey, thanks for watching, Hapless Hunter. Appreciate all four of you to do. Um, <laughs> stay tuned for, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Who knows? Stay tuned for whatever. I don't know, me falling off a four-wheeler or, I don't know, jumping off of my roof because yet another thing's not going to work. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Remember, God is good, and so are you. I'm red. Well, that sunburn, I'm about to have a stroke.